Welcome back to Morning Daily right here on Spring TV and uh, in studio. We're privileged to have uh, Ms. Laura Missy. And we're, we're basically talking, you know, all things governance and human rights and and obviously the, 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 big, the big one mm. being the inauguration yeah. tomorrow. Um, so let's get into, uh, obviously tomorrow he's going to, we're waiting for his speech, the mm-hmm. president-elect. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's also look at, you know, the flip side, which is the now opposition PF. Um, I think the question that has been floating around is, you know, who's going to take up leadership, you know, um, do we have a strong uh, opposition? Um, maybe let's get into you know the role of what an opposition plays when it comes to like checks and balances. Mm. I know was it yesterday mm. when uh, Boman Lusambo was, was uh, he posted something about going on a break to rest, mm. but when he comes back, he will come into you know he w- he wants to come in well rested so that he can help with you know um, maintaining checks and balances of the new regime. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's the best person to do that, but anyway, uh, what is the what would you say is the role of uh, uh, opposition um, when it comes to good governance? Well, the opposition um, provides oversight. Uh, mm. It ensures that the government is kept in check, is is, is fulfilling its promises, is not abusing uh, mm-hmm. resources. For example, that the, the, the money that belongs to the to the state is mm. translating into improved lives. It, uh, there's no uh, growing dictatorship, uh, that uh, your democracy is safe, so just about everything. So essentially what the opposition does is meant to hold um, government accountable. And it's it's a very uh, important role in a democracy. Um, The extent to which the PF will be able to do it is is, is a completely different question. I'm I'm trying to think, who's in parliament? You see, maybe if you had people like uh, Given Lubinda, you know, those ones who are are a lot more well-spoken and maybe a bit better read, Mm. maybe you'd get the... um, But they are... Tisilla. I haven't heard Tisilla speak much, Mm. so I'm not very sure what her politics are and just what her ability to engage Mm. is. Mm. But you have people like Bino, I think, who's good, Mm. who's an independent, but again, sometimes the problem is in a period like this, Mm. you find opposition members gravitating towards the the ruling ruling party, party. Mm. especially independents uh, uh, gravitating towards the ruling party. So we, uh, we are not in, in a very uh, good space, I think, when it comes to the, the opposition. Primarily because I think the, the uh, PF will disintegrate. I'm yeah. almost certain mm. that the PF is going to disintegrate. I might be wrong, but I think the biggest problem PF sits is the, is the way they connected themselves to the Treasury. You yeah. know, like, it's a party that was living off public money, mm. both as a party and individuals, mm. you see. So without, you know, it's like, it's, it's like right now they've disconnected the IV. Mm. Most people have no idea the IV, you know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think most of them, their businesses were not businesses per se. Yeah. Mm. You know, they, they depended almost completely on being connected to government. At analogy, it is government business mm. and all. So the extent to which they are able to survive and the extent to which they don't try to cross over, mm. um, I'm, I'm not very sure. But w- you would hope that they would do a good job. Remember when PF won, we had a very strong opposition yeah. from, from MMD. Yes. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. You know, uh, unfortunately we lost uh, George Kunda, mm. you remember, mm. who, who was really good. But he was good. And then, we, of course, we had people like Dora's jumping sheep and that kind of thing. Mm. But they, they were very good in opposition because they were very good in government, in yeah. terms conceptually strong. Mm. PF was not conceptually strong in government. You know, like they, 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 they sounded like they hardly read, they, starting from the president down, you know, you, it's difficult to, 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 demi, to determine what do they think about mm. anything, yeah. mining, education and all? Yeah, yeah even it, just policies, like are you well versed on the policies yes, in place you right see. now? Now, in opposition, you have to be much better versed actually mm. in policies because you should be able to read and then um, uh, ask questions to the minister. You're, you're the one who's putting uh, questions on yes. the floor of the mm-hmm. house. Uh, um, yeah, so I would hope that uh, <laughs> civil society, especially, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and does I was, not. I was, I was actually yeah. going to ask you the question to say, okay, so the PF will be licking its wounds at least for the next one, two years. Uh-huh. Um, the only other opposition party there is um, 
Mr. Haivi Hamdudu's party mm. with one seat, with one then seat, the rest yeah. are uh, independent, who, yeah. as you said, will gravitate towards the ruling party. So that now goes back to the civil society. Uh, so, fine, we are in the change that we all wanted as civil society, mm. but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you can't be too comfortable that just because it's a change we wanted, everything will be all good. Mm. What role can the civil society play in the next five years? The civil society just has to continue doing what it was doing yeah. without, with, 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 without missing a heartbeat. Because yeah. if, if civil society does what it did after PF won, yeah. we are in trouble. You see, uh, remember in the first year or two after, civil, after PF won, 11, see, yeah. Yeah, civil society went to bed with, with SATA, you know, the Post newspaper yeah. also went off, you know, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I sometimes think the Post newspaper is my, a lot to blame mm. for what what happened to PF or what happened to the country yeah. because the, remember the post newspaper was where people went mm -hmm. you know it, it is it is it is what hold government to account yeah. then they just beca became praise singers yeah. for uh for What's Michael that? as they mm -hmm. called it yeah. and then uh, so, so I'm hoping that this time around civil society uh independent newspapers you guys yeah. that you, you need immediately you see anything that needs to be raised must be raised yeah. you know the, the, we must not allow the new government uh to to, to sit back uh, on its on its laurels yeah. and remember it's it's, it's, a, it's it's a massively popular government yeah, i mean yeah. like I, I don't so they can get out like, potentially get out <laughs> yes. anything mm. for now. i don't yeah. think we've had a president as popular yeah. as as, as president of, uh, the yeah no, that's true yeah Beyond the six eight percent, just the feeling. You know, like people, yeah. people. You know, I was, I was, actually, I was actually saying this to someone. I was like, you know, it's almost like a savior, yeah, you know, kind of uh, um, mentality, or even just a sentiment out there is, you know, that it's a few good him feeling. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's good a feeling, but they're praising him like he's a savior. And and there's also there needs to be a, a line drawn. Because there's a danger to that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Because but then the you problem, don't see the flaws. The problem is yeah. they actually love this guy. You see, mm. and, 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 and that's where it, it becomes a bit problematic. It's not like people are making it up. You know, like uh, there's a sense that they can't believe that we, we didn't make him president before. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And then, of course, there is the comparison with the outgoing president. It's night and day. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. just, just the way he speaks the way he comes across and all yeah. so I think um, it's very important for the for, for institutions first of all institutions like the judiciary institutions like the anti commission commission parliament and then of course civil society yeah. to themselves to be a little more sober you know like we can't all get swept up in this yeah, yeah. <laughs> let True. the people you know I mean the people is a, is a different let the people love their president yeah, yeah. but we can't all uh, sit and, and and not notice what's happening yeah. otherwise uh, we, we might wake up uh, a few years from now and find we are in, we are in trouble again mm. You see, so, yeah, I, I think most of us seem to think he'll, he'll be uh, maybe much tighter, he'll hold yeah. a much tighter grip yeah. Yeah. on his ministers yeah. as compared to the, 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 the outgoing yeah. uh, president. But still, I, I th civil society and the press, these two groups they have to play their role, have to play their role because, play because they're going to have a very mm. weak or a, a very, very pained opposition, yeah, you know, true. like, yeah, um, they can't be, you know, uh, the PF, being, even just the tag of opposition, can you yeah. imagine? It must be very painful for yeah. them. Um, I have a question yeah. on uh, the Public Order Act. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was used viciously during this past regime. Um, with when it comes to, you know, we're talking about voicing out civil yeah. society. Mm -hmm. We're talking about young people voicing out. I mean, on Friday we had uh, B Flo yeah. and Wesi, and they talked about, you know, the. The protest that they had and the experience and how we saw you know police with their heavy armor were around the city looking for them where, mm -hmm. where are they and even just looking at you know what the what led up to vespa's death for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. at unza all of those are related to the public order act um what would you like to see addressed as far as the public order act going forward with the new regime um because i, I Obviously, that is a, a constitutional reformation of some sort. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see going forward? You know, especially um, 
you know, you're, you're tagged as the human rights defender. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you like to see going forward as far as, you know, the Public Order Act in its current form? Yeah, and, and before, and it's funny you ask that because mm. I was going to ask to say, if we now shift to um, UPND government, mm. uh, so far we've heard that uh, they have a lean cabinet. Um, mm. I saw a post from... Um, from him on Twitter and I think or from his uh, spokesperson that they want to um, submit to parliament that the president should address parliament every three months, every quarter, mm. so that is answerable to parliament like it is in South Africa. Uh, I was going to ask you in addition to that, if you were to be given an uh, elevator pitch with HH, what would you tell him to do in order for him to remain popular or massively loved all the way to 2026 in addition to things that you'd love them, uh, you'd love to see them change? Okay, so the Public Order Act is, is, is actually a subsidiary law, so it's not a constitutional change, and it's very easy to change. The reason why we've never changed it is simply because every government has, has, been, yes, yeah. has benefited. But Public Order Act, access to information, these two laws we are hoping would, would pass uh, very quickly, and then we should also begin to institute uh, the, the, the newly passed uh, finance and budgeting law. Yes. There are laws that we have. You know, you know, our laws are not that bad, mm. but the Public Order Act is one law that needs needs to go. You know, the, to go or to be reformed. Reformed, and actually, it can go. You know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been in it's, it's been it's, in, it's, in it's, that it's, form it's, since 1955. Yes, yes. You, you, you see what I mean. Uh, you you can pass a law for for order mm. that is about keeping order. Yeah. You know, not a, not a law that favors exactly. power holders, mm. you know. And police brutality. And, and, and police brutality, you know. Um, the number of times we would try to meet and you'd be told, no, you can't meet yeah. because uh, we, we are unable to... Yeah. to, 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 to Provide... Uh, yeah. Facilitate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I, but uh, moving on to what I would say to, uh, to, to the president. Um, obviously, the economy is huge. Yeah. You know, uh, and the expectations are massive across the board. Yeah, the, the 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 biggest problem in the last two to three years, especially, was just household hunger. You know, people were unable to feed themselves across board yeah. in the way you'd want. Mm. So even middle classes, my ex goleka you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So yes, the middle classes could still eat three meals a day, yeah. but there's some things you just couldn't that yeah. you probably mm. want. You know, cheese, yaba, 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 lusambo. Yeah. You just, you know, like disappeared. Yeah. And I think food should never be an issue. Mm. You know, you know, in 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 a functional country, food should not be an issue. Yeah. And the problem with our country is that. Poverty is food determined. You know, like um, people cannot. Wunga is a problem. Yeah, yeah. This the and that. Basic, uh, the basic, basic meal, yes. Yeah. So I think one of the first things we need to do is ensure that people can eat, mm. because when people can eat, you bring down things like crime. Yeah. You know, um, people w- don't wake up at zero three to come and break up in, into a house and just pick a, a few small things. Nisha kut, you know the whole yeah. night, you know kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So I think that we need to deal with issues of household poverty, mm. and then for me the big one is education. Again, education of the poor child. Yeah. See, our education system I find is extremely unjust. You know, we, you have the children who go to government schools who are 120 to a class. Mm. The teacher hardly, hardly comes. Yeah. There are no books and all. And then they come and write the same exam with the kids from private school who are 25 in a class. Yeah, yeah. And the teacher has come. The, the so I, is we, easier. We, yeah, we need to create a path out of poverty via uh, education. Feeder roads, I think, um, our work, you know, we um, work quite a lot in the rural areas. Yeah. And, and in every meeting we start, we always ask the people to ask to tell us what are the five issues that they, they are, they are yeah. battling with. Yeah. Mm. Water is on every list. Zambia's battle with water. Yeah. You know, five hours, two hours, water, you know, others water with their animals. So we need to do something about water. And then the next one is always feeder roads. Yeah. You know, which is why I hated these flyover bridges. You know what I mean? They, they really used to drive me crazy because I, 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 I saw what majority of people are dealing with. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, most of the, most of the every year children don't go to school because, because of a boxes. bridge that costs ten pin. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, 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 it ten pin yeah. you could you could you could you could you could sort it out. Um, feeder roads, you need grader. You know, all you need is a grader. Mm. You see, so 
we need to go back there and see. And, and, and once you've done feed the rules, you know, your agriculture improves, people are able to go to market yeah. and all. So uh, there's no way you can ask this question to me. The answer is the same. I just <laughs> want, <laughs> I, if, if I spoke to President Hichilema, it would be that. The economy for all of us, you know, the economy for all of us, but particularly, I think, for the millions uh, who woke up and at zero chakuti, some of them midnight, yeah. to, to vote, you know, and they, they stood in the cold because they wanted to feed their children and give their children a chance. I think that, that, that's what this vote was about. Right. I, th I think uh, on that note, um, we can open lines for two, three phone calls. If you are watching, please call 961 415028 is the number to call us on uh, if you have a question for uh, Ms. Laramiti who's our guest this morning, uh, so feel free uh, to call and then uh, pose your question. Um, as we are winding up, uh, ma'am, um, in terms of um, the transition, again, Zambia has gone back to yeah. being that beacon of peace. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask you this, um, as much as uh, he's left, I would say he's left the economy of the country in crumbles, um, what message would you give uh, the outgoing president? He gracefully... Um, you know, considered defeat, and so far we are seeing that you know he's obviously handing over. But of course, the most recent, which is a pardoning, hasn't gone too well. So people are saying she have just kept that away because now he's just reminding us that he was a bad president. What would your what would be your message? And maybe if you can explain a little bit more about that pardoning of those 60, because the names. I think the issue there is the names that mm. were pardoned, not the pardoning of mm. the inmates. Those are the names. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I was a very grateful almost that that, that uh, President Lugo did, did not take us through uh, petitions, petitions yeah. and refusal to hand over power, yeah. which I think the pressure was high. You know, when you lose unexpectedly, the pressure is high. So he goes down in history and joins other presidents that have, have allowed the greater good. Yeah, and I true. think for that we should always be uh, thankful. We grateful. should always be thankful and, yeah. and, and uh, commend him. Yeah. Uh, as for the patterning, you know, it's bizarre. Mm. Um, I don't know why he did it, you know, you, I suppose they, he was beholden people. He had promised people he would do it when he won, when yeah. he won, <laughs> me, you see. But the, the people of that list, for me, those Chinese. Mm. She, was, she was complaining I was, about I was the Chinese. That, uh, me, for uh, me, that kind of traumatized me. You know, yeah, the Chinese yeah. From, so it's really traumatized me too because they killed an ordinary Zambian, a poor Zambian, smashed his head, and, and they are out. Mm. The number of murderers there, why are we, you know, like, whether you look at uh, Keith Mukata, where you look at those Chinese, Mohan. You, you, Mohan, you can have people coming out of prison for five years. Yeah. Five years is what you go in for theft by seven, yeah. you, you know. So the, um, the families out there, it, it really suggests that justice uh, belongs to the privilege. The privilege, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, like as long as you are connected, you can come out and, and, and just get on with your life. So President Lungu was very wrong there. Uh, he had the, the legal uh, ability to do it. So let's let, let's yeah, uh, can't uh, say much. Yeah, we can say that. Mm. But morally, that was a very immoral. And why you do that as you leave mm. and, and remind, like you say, you're reminding people like this is what we lived with mm. for seven years. Yeah. You know, like decisions that would leave us confused. <laughs> you know, like, why has the president done this? Why has the president done this? Yeah. Seven years, that was President Lungu, uh, president. Yeah. So he, he, as he leaves, he then puts a stamp, you know, yes. on, 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 on those kinds of decisions that were really about himself, his party, and not about uh, the party. So, I mean, not about the country. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I find those very sad. Yeah, well, um, we did have callers, but I really want to catch your your answer. But on that note, I guess uh, we also have to thank you for coming this morning. Yes. And we hope to have you back again uh, sometime soon in future. Right, Sarah? Maybe after the uh, parliament. Yes, after, after, after the opening, opening parliament. of parliament. parliament yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the president's speech. And the in, cabinet. The, uh, well, maybe, I maybe am. before I let you go, uh, what would be your ideal cabinet? Maybe a, a few names that you have in mind to say. I wish they put... This one there, in fact, we do have a caller. So, <laughs> good morning, welcome to Morning Daily. Your name and where are calling us from? Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Sir, before I might need to go, let me ask you one question. Yes, sir. Okay. Please go ahead quickly. I might need to, how are you? Well, thanks, and you? 
I'm all right, thanks so much. My name is Tim, I'm calling from Katerouk. I remember very well that you were one of the victims in the rule of our old man. Each time you had the whole meeting, the police would bounce on you. Now that you are preaching this way of that we should pardon them, we should forgive them, how do you feel <laughs> personally yourself? Because you see, we people differ. Mm. The way I say I'm going to behave, the way the way I'm going to be is different the way I would behave myself. Mm. Mm. This regime really tortured us, I can assure you. Even these broadcasters, if I'm to compare between Zoran DC and Spain, you will find that Zoran DC, the way they were operating the last week, they were sort of, they had a phobia, you know? Eh? Fearing that maybe we are going to make a mistake, they would bounce on us. Mm. Mm. So really, the regime was bad. We were bad. For me, I'm very, very, very excited. Very, very excited that we are going in the new regime. So I want to hear your opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tembo. Mm. My opinion on? On uh, you were victimized by the you know previous regime, and uh, he talked about you know these pardons, and uh, what else did he talk about? That's, yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty that's much yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that people who were in the last government, if they committed crimes, they should pay for them. Yeah. You know, like uh, crimes. Mm. So I, I would like to see our money back. I certainly want to see our money back because it went out in billions. Um, we added. We added that at the ACA, just the number of money lost to corruption, and it comes to almost 21 billion, just in the FIC, one, one report. Dollars or kwacha? Uh, kwacha. That's but ju just one, one, one FIC report. Just, no, no, the 2016 to, oh, to, to yeah. end of year. So that's, mm. can you imagine? So, uh, and uh, the FIC report and the Auditor General reports, they are s samples, they are random yeah. samples. They don't even look at every matter. Sure. So, what, 21 billion is what one report. If you add Auditor General's report, if you add what was not known, we probably lost 100 billion into private pockets. Mm. And I, th I think we should uh, really deal with that. But to end with your question, you know, I haven't really thought much about who I want in the cabinet, but I know that I'd like to see. Uh, Francis Chipimo as Bank of Zambia okay. uh, um, governor. governor. He is the deputy governor. He's a deputy governor. Yes. So I'd like to see Francis Chipimo as governor. I'd like to see Mumba Malila okay. as, uh, as, as Chief Justice. Because I think these institutions are actually much more vital. Ministers come and go. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, In fact, yeah. yeah you know, if you have PSS, you know, you actually can live without ministers. But anyway, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just waste money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But if you have good PSS, Mm. You know, you can actually have one minister for three ministries, but, but a good PS. But good PS in says them, yeah. in, in each of them, yeah. yes. So for me, it's institutions like that. You know, I'd, I'd, li I'd like to see a good speaker, a speaker who actually allows debate. Correct. You mm. know, uh, and protects the opposition. The, the job of the speaker is actually to protect the opposition, yes. to allow it to carry out its function, because the, the ruling party is powerful. Yeah. You see, so if, if, if we have a parliament in which we are hearing proper debate, mm. proper uh, holding uh, to account of, mm. the, of the government, we have a Bank of Zambia we can trust, we have a Minister of Finance we can trust, I think we'll be on the yeah. right path. Right, on that note, mm. um, we thank you for joining us, ma'am. Um, that was uh, Madam Laura Minty joining us this this uh, this morning on Morning Daily. We'll get her back. I know a lot of phone calls, a lot of questions that you had for her, but I wanted to just give her the opportunity to just, uh, you know, you can see she's relieved. She's <laughs> let we need to allow her to rest, but she has said that they will still keep the new government uh, to, you know, they'll hold them down to, to, you know, checks and balances. Thank you for joining us. We'll be coming back after a short break. <laughs>